Good day and welcome in this first DCS video tutorial of the Mirage 2000. Today I will explain you as much as I can all the different instruments inside the cockpit. Uh, this video will be in three parts. First part, the left console, second part, the front panel, and third part, the right console. Uh, just notice I will not uh, explain you instruments that I will show you in other videos, such as the radar, the PCN, etc. etc. Now first let's get inside the cockpit. So let's start on the left panel here, the left console. And even before we have few um, few switches here on the left side of the seat. First, we have here a switch to position for the emergency uh, emergency system of, for the oxygen of the pilots. So those different uh, functions are uh, clickable, of course. Uh, there is absolutely no incidence in the in the Mirage. So first switch, actually it's on normal and now it's on emergency. In French, it's called secours. Here we have a switch uh, to position. Uh, it commands the percentage of oxygen. So on the back it's on normal, about 20%. On the front it's 100%. Um, it's simply a boost for the pilot when it gets tired or something like that. And here we have a switch uh, button. Sorry, it's a button. Uh, there is actually three position. Actually it's on normal, there is no overpressure. When you right click uh, you activate the overpressure and when you um, stay on the right click it activates the test position. And overpressure is used when you begin to maneuver. It helps you to, to breathe correctly when you have heavy G's. Now, let's move a bit forward. Here we have a switch with a cover, switch to position, it's the fifth link of the CDVE. I'm going to talk about it just as simply as possible. Um, this function is also called uh, Ultime Secours Elevant in French. Uh, the, it's the emergency command of the elevants. So you just use it when uh, the elevants are uh, un uncontrollable for uh, an electronic reason. We will see that when we will talk about the failures of the Mirage 2000. Here on the left and here on the right are the same functions. It's simply a test on the left for the autopilot pilot automatic in French, simply switch with cover to position. On the right, actually, it's on arrêt, stop, and here on the left, marche, on, simply. Here we have on the right the test for the CDVE. CDVE is, um, we can translate it in English by electronic flight control. So, switch this one has three positions. On the middle, by default, it's off. Here on the right, it's a short test. And here on the left, it's the long test. The long test is about 30 seconds. Short one is for seven seconds. There is absolutely no differences between the long and the short, so I suggest you to switch directly in short. And here we have the lights. The red light means when you activate one test, means the test you activated is not functional, so you have a failure on the autopilot or on the CDVE. And if the green light is on, it means there is no trouble. Here we have an indicator for the origin of the failure, if it's electrical or hydraulic. We will see that also. There is actually another warning panel in the front panel. We will see that at the end of the second part of the video. 
here we have in French vid vid simply it's the um, fuel dump function. In the Mirage 2000 you can only fuel dump the um, fuel tanks. You cannot uh, fuel dump the internal tanks. Uh, it's simply a button so you just have to remove the cover and press it. Here we have an emergency calculator. Um, so just a quick word of about the calculator. Um, it's inside the engine and it uh, calculates depending of the air velocity, uh, the air density, the air temperature. Uh, it will calculate how to parameter the different uh, sections of the engine to provide uh, maximum efficiency, depending also of the position of the throttle. Uh, it also controls the nozzle. So you have here this switch, three position. When you just right click on it, it's the rearm in French, it's simply a reset function. And you just remove the cover, left click on it, so on the back position, it's uh, the emergency position. The emergency position is simply a degrade mode. Here we have the emergency oil, but it's not functional. Here we have a switch to position to shut off the afterburner. Coupure post combustion. So actually, you, remo you remove the cover, you switch on the back, and now you cannot use the afterburner anymore. Here we have uh, a switch to bypass the security uh, to avoid you to start up the radar on ground. It's a security for the ground crew. You cannot use the radar on the ground even to hit the radar. Uh, so this switch uh, by default is on, it's on the back. You just have to select and to press it in front, and now you can use your radar on ground. Here is a switch to uh, start the, the magnetophone, but it's not functional in this case. Here you have the emergency uh, emergency trim. So by default is here on the normal position. The trim uh, is on the stick, and now you use it on emergency position, and you use this little thing to trim. It's not functional on this, yes, even if you trim, it's uh, always the same button. So you just have to uh, set the button trim on your commands and whatever the position you have, there is no influence. Here you have uh, the rudder trim. Let's move a bit forward. Now, we have here different uh, knobs for the volume. Here is for the VOR ILS, uh, here is for the Tacken, both are not functional for now. Here is the volume for the Seekers, uh, we will see that uh, when we will talk about the air-to-air -air, uh, armament. Here is the volume for uh, in this, in the Mirage 2000C. It's uh, the only, uh, how to say, it's only to communicate with the ground crew, is the insert phone. And uh, in the Mirage 2000 Bravo, it also, it's a two-seat flight, uh, two-seat aircraft. Um, in the Mirage 2000 Bravo, it also comes on the volume of the insert phone, intercom between the pilot and in the, um, the training in the back, in the back seat. Here we have the volume of the RWR, the DDM, etc. We will see that in another video. And here we have both volume of the radio. Left on the rail, it's the volume of the UHF. Right, the green one, volume of the VUHF. Here is a switch to position to uh, begin the ignition, in flight ignition, if you, uh, for any reason, your uh, engine shut off, you can try to uh, begin an ignition with this switch. The procedure is also not uh, notified inside the aircraft, but we will see that in another video. Also, we have this uh, throttle here, and just 
below, behind the throttle, we have all the radar panel. Of course, all the radar panel, I will explain you all the different functions in another video. Here, this little button is to shut off the engine. Here we have uh, first a uh, switch and also a cover uh, to position. On the left, actually, it's off and now it's on. It's the emergency uh, emergency fuel. So if you have any trouble to get fuel inside the engine for a failure in the pumps or something like that, you can try to use this function. So it's uh, simply now you turn it on and you even uh, depending on the position of the throttle you set, it will not uh, respond. And this little uh, this little switch will be now your throttle. Let's move a bit forward. Now, here we have two switches, uh, two position each. On the left, it's uh, in French "pelle," uh, in English "shovels." It's um, it's little uh, parts uh, below the um, air intake that will allow the Mirage to increase the air intake depending of many factors such as speed, angle of attack, etc. Two position automatic, so it will uh, extend or retract automatically, or you can force the retract position. Here, souris in French, mouse in English. Um, it's just in inside the air intake on both sides. Uh, it uh, it's simply a device that will reduce the speed of the air inside the getting inside the engine to make it subsonic. So when you go supersonic, it will. Uh, allow the air getting inside the engine to reduce speed, so it will uh, always be air intake subsonic. Also, to a position automatic and retract. And here on the right, we have the slats. Uh, this switch has three position by default on the middle automatic, here front extended, sortie, and now back. Rentrer, uh, retract. All these three switches have to set have to be set on automatic position, and the extended or uh, retracted position will depend of the failures of the Mirage. We will see that also in the use of the another video. Here, three switches, three position each for the external lights. On the left, we have the anti-collision. Here are the navigation lights, and here are the formation lights. Three positions of on the back, middle, uh, dim, front, bright. Here we have a, a knob for the intensity of the air-to-air -air refuel light, not functional. Here we have a switch with cover two position for the anti-skid ABS system. Uh, it uh, has so two positions: front anti-skid is on, back anti-skid is off. Here we have a switch. Right now, it has two positions: on the bottom off, on the top on. It's for to activate the fuel intake in the probe. Actually, I just said it has two positions because I think regarding to this uh, stick, it's supposed to have three positions, stop, air-to-air -air refuel by day or air-to-air -air refuel by night, simply. But actually, it only has two positions. Here we have the air-to-air -air refuel light, so on, off. Uh, actually, this switch has uh, really three positions, but I have 
actually no idea what is uh, the other position. I can see here there is an off array position. I have a, I also have two positions on, and there is also uh, a thing called uh, serpam. Uh, but serpam, I looked on the web, and this function serpam is known as an after action report. So I have absolutely no idea how it is. Uh, just remember on off um, sorry off on and depending uh, of uh, the two positions here on on there is no effect anyway if I have any idea uh, what's the difference I will tell you here we have the taxi light so uh, three position on the back of taxi position, landing position, depending on the intensity of the, the light on the taxi and the landing. Here we have the police light. Remember, the Mirage 2000 is an interceptor and it is actually very good in this role. Um, we, in France, we use it to, to do sometimes uh, visual identification and we have to do it also by night, so by night we use the police light. Uh, also, fun fact, um, the procedure uh, is to come by day on the left side of the aircraft because the, um, the commander is on the left side of uh, a heavy airplane. By night, you come on the right side because the police light is on the left side of the Mirage. Here we have the two radio. Here is the VUHF aft and here is the UHF front. We will talk about it uh, in details when I will talk about the radio navigation. And here we have first a handle for the parachute or in French cross it's simply a hook uh, this hook is uh, only used uh, for uh, for approaches uh, in very heavy second second circumstances sorry that was difficult for me um, it's not used in this yes anyway um, the parachute here so front the panel of the handle of the front is off you uh, retract it back uh, it will extend the parachute and you have to pull it front again to uh, cut the parachute by the way you can remove the parachute and replace it by a pod called uh, in French éclair, we could translate it by flash, uh, that allow us to gather, to get more uh, countermeasure. Here we have the uh, explanations for the air-to-air -air ignition. I will explain it in another video as I said before. And here you have the uh, canopy jettison. So you just have to switch this handle front to uh, to chase on the canopy. So, thank you. That's the end of the first part. Let's go forward on the second part. Here, we have the the identifications of the positions of the elements. So actually, there is no hydraulic uh, pressure inside the aircraft. So all my elements are down and my rudder is uh, actually on the center. Here we have the handle of the gear. Actually it's down. Uh, well, you will see uh, how to put it up. Um, here we have uh, first here a button. It's simply to reset the trim, this button here. This uh, is a switch to position to uh, command the limitation of the electronic flight control. What does it mean? Actually, it's up. This switch is up on air-to-air -air position. There is no limitation. 
Now I switch it down, it's on load uh, position. Depending of my uh, payloads, the aircraft will uh, tell me that uh, the, the aircraft is very heavy and I have to uh, switch this to the loaded position to limit my maneuverability and because if I do not do this uh, uh, there is um, probably there will be many uh, forces uh, that will be applied on the wings or on the fuselage so anyway uh, the in the in this position in the load position it will limit my uh, angle of attack my G's uh, and also my uh, roll speed here is a switch to position uh, in French gain CDVE in English gain uh, CDVE for uh, it um, it's used to limit um, uh, the the how to say the control of the fly-by wire. Also, it's a uh, degrade mode of the fly-by wire. We'll see that in uh, the another video when I will talk about the emergency. Here is a switch to position for the cannon. Actually, the cannon is off when I move it up. It's on simply. Here we have an indicator of the different uh, external parts, like here is aérofrein in French, air brakes, simply in English. Uh, when you use the brakes, uh, uh, this will be also light up. Um, SPAD is the anti-skid. Here, uh, cross it's for a hook, but we do not have it. On this, yes, we have here um, DIRAV in French. Um, it's simply the nose wheel, nose wheel steering. And we also have uh, the indication of the gear. When you have the three uh, lights here, it means your uh, gear are functional. And if you have any uh, troubles with one or uh, your three years, those lights will be uh, will not be light up. Here you have an handle for the emergency gear down. Here you have a button to press to jettison all your payload except the magic two. So if you press this button, you will uh, absolutely jettison all your payload. For the magic two you have another procedure to follow and we will see that in another video. Here you have a magnificent clock. Here you have the PCA. Uh, in French panneau de contrôle armement. Uh, we could translate it by armament control panel. We have here the master arm and also switch for the selective jettison. We will see the functions in another video. Here we have a box for the countermeasures. There is uh, three functions. Actually, the, the functions here is on stop, manual, automatic. It will also, when you get on manual or automatic, it will display the numbers of chaff here and flowers here, electromagnetic or infrared, infrared, infrarouge in French, it's exactly the same. Here is a switch to position um, to uh, jettison, to drop your countermeasure one by one, coup par coup in French, or in uh, a program. Oh, by the way, the automatic function is not functional for now. And fun fact also, by, by the way, the automatic functions pilots in France do not use the automatic functions because uh, when you got a spike, uh, which means when you are locked by another radar, the, 
the computer will drop uh, all the controllers in a few seconds, so they don't use it. Here we have the speed indicator in two types of speed. Here we have the IAS speed, indication air speed. Uh, here we have the speed in Mac. Here we have the altimeter. Actually, it's um, quite not very precise because by default it gives me a uh, Fox Echo in 0948, and as you can see, it's uh, minus 100 feet. A good one should be 0952, for example. Anyway, uh, I'm sure the Rasband team will. Uh, fix it soon or later. Here we have the emergency ADI. Here we have the main ADI. Here we have the variometer. Here we have a switch to position. Um, well, um, just uh, just a quick explanation. It's very hard uh, in a delta wing aircraft to get in a spin. But by the way, when you get in, it's very, very, very hard to get off the spin. Um, the fly-by-wire in the Mirage 2000 will not allow a Mirage, a pilot Mirage, to get in a spin. It's quite impossible to get in a spin in the Mirage 2000. But if uh, for any reason you get in a spin, the fly-by-wire will not allow you to get off the spin. Though so this switch will just allow you to shut off the, uh, the fly-by-wire to control this, uh, s this specific part. So you just have to switch in a spin, free in French, and you can get off the spin, or get in if you want. Here you have um, the selector for the uh, altitude selected hold. Uh, so you just have to select, for example, you switch uh, two, three, zero. You want to you want your autopilot to get you to flight level two, three, zero. You just select it. Here you have the different uh, buttons for the autopilot. So first, when you start it, uh, well, um, just just a quick review, we will see the autopilot in another video. Uh, on, altitude hold, when you press it, it will uh, hold the altitude you just reached. It will automatically. Uh, and also, this one is the altitude uh, selected. This one is a reserve button, so it's not functional. And here is the autopilot for the landing system. So you, you have to uh, be on the localizer first, but when you capture the localizer, you are supposed to press this button and you will automatically uh, land. Actually, I think um, I've not tested yet, but uh, when I tested it a few months ago, it was not functional. Here you have a uh, display for the frequencies of both radios. On the left here you have the angle of attack. Here is an indicator for the failure, so you have the yellow failures and the red one. Um, now we have few buttons here for the HUD. So let's start here. It's the brightness uh, knob for the HUD. Here you have uh, switched three position to start the HUD. So actually down, off, middle, on, and up test. Here you have a switch to position for the auxiliary gun sight. So actually it's off, now it's on, and you also have to raise or let it down, the, um, the auxiliary gun sight. Here you have a knob to increase or decrease the sight of the gun sight. The main gun sight, I mean, not the auxiliary. 
Here you have uh, functions to um, it's a declutter, so it means it will erase a few informations to on the HUD. Here is a button to reset the HUD, it's not functional. Here you have two functions of the Canon position, we will see that in another video. We have here the um, switch three positions for the radio uh, probe, the radio altimeter, off, on, and test and here is to display the altitude Zulu Bravo will always this only sorry only display the altitude in uh, altitude pressure here will also display the altitude and the radio uh, altitude so altitude in uh, pressure and the radio uh, altitude and now this one on the bottom will uh, display exactly the same thing as the H1 but it will also, you can also select a minimum altitude, a minimum radio altitude and you just have to uh, select with this uh, knob uh, select the minimum altitude it's only used in displays or in landing or in air to ground assets now let's get on here down we have here the edge dd a down display uh, it's simply the radar for most common uh, there is many functions here I will talk it uh, I will talk about it in another video now let's get down we have here the IFF which is not functional for now we have here a selector for the hydraulic display which is just here we have probably the most important function of this aircraft it simply commands the toll of the rudder <coughs> and here we have a backup um, a backup uh, pressure a backup altimeter now let's get here on top here we have the G meter here we have the RWR here we have the HSI here we have something called the P, uh, PPA panneau de préparation armement armament preparation panel here we have two uh, two needles uh, on the top is for the it's the tachymet tachymeter simply it's uh, the RPM it's the power of the engine here we have the, the temperature of the engine here we have uh, a light that when it's light up it's for the afterburner so when it's light up you are a burner here we have a button for the ignition of the engine here we have um, on top here it display the fuel flow in kilogram per minute here we have a selector for the bingo fuel here we have a fire engine indicator here is on the uh, main uh, on the main section of the engine and here he is on the afterburner section here we have the fuel panel simply on the fuel panel um, we have here on the left the, uh, the total fuel inside the inside the tankers so inside the aircraft and now here the dot is the total fuel inside the engine plus inside the external tankers we also have few lights depending on uh, what uh, what kind of tankers are empty or not and we also have here the cross feed by default it's closed here we have the emergency panel 
warning panel here. Here we have a oxygen indicator here. Here we have a switch that I absolutely don't know what it is. Uh, I just don't know, it's absolutely not in my uh, manual, so if you got any ideas or if I found uh, what it is someday, I will uh, let you know. Here we have on top, left here, the battery switch. So down it's off and up on, simply. Here we have different uh, switches. Here is the um, uh, transformator. No, it's not. It's not like that in English. I forget the translation. Um, it simply uh, allow the power to to get. Uh, it converts AC to DC. And if you had uh, something like Highway to Hell in mind, you know you're good. And here are both alternators that convert, uh, that provide uh, power, electrical power from the engine. Now, that's all for the second part. Oh, sorry, I, rem I forgot something. This switch here is simply um, the. QRA, Quick Reaction Alert Switch. It's not uh, functional in DCS. There is mm, no function in uh, in the reality. When you activate this switch, it will. It, well, you have to be connected in ground power first. And when you activate this switch, it simply uh, cut off the power in all the aircraft except in the PCA, something we will just uh, see in a few seconds, in the inertial system, um, because the memory inside uh, this device is uh, active memory. So if you, if you cut off, uh, if you shut off the power, uh, all the memory will be gone and you will lose all the data. And that's all for the uh, second part. Now, Let's move on to the third part. We have here the PCN, Post de Commande de Navigation, Navigation Command Post. Mostly, uh, it's uh, the it's the instrument that will allow you to select the waypoint, to enter waypoint, etc, etc. We have here a switch to position for the electro pump. Simply, it's an uh, electronic hydraulic pump. So actually it's off, now it's on. And you also, when you right click and you maintain it, it's a test position. Here is the audio warning off on. Here is the heat of the pitots off on. Here we have the IFF interrogator. So you have here the different kind of modes. You have here a knob to switch it on, etc. I will explain this in another video. Here we have uh, different functions. We have the ECM, electronic countermeasures. We have the RWR, we have the DDM, Detection des missiles, which allow you to know if there is uh, smoke, smoke getting out of uh, an aircraft, or getting out of a missile. And uh, this warning will uh, allow you to maybe detect uh, an infrared missile around your aircraft. Well, you have it. Uh, you have this function in uh, the Aiden Charlie. You uh, you can also, uh, in reality, uh, we did not have these functions, but they implemented it. So anyway, we have here the. Uh, Another command for the countermeasures, in French, lanceleur, LL. We have here two instruments for the radio navigation, VOR ILS on the left and the TACAN on the right. We'll talk about it when I will talk about the radio navigation. 
We have here a switch three positions for the emergency uh, gyroscope and the emergency compass. We have here uh, two radiators. Um, it's the PSM, Post Selector de Mode, uh, Mode Selector Post. Here we have uh, something as useful as the the toll of the the pedals or the the oxygen system. It's simply the air condition. Here we have the different lights, and it's getting dark around. It's getting dark. Sorry, around. So I actually need it. Uh, and here we have the different uh, fuel pumps. So fuel pumps left and right actually switch to position on the left off, on the right on. We have here the starter pump and you just have behind this cover the uh, starter uh, button. So you just have to remove the cover, it automatically switch on the starter pump and you just have to press the button to start the engine. We will see that in another video also. Here is the ignition system, electronic ignition system, and here is the fire extinguisher. We have here the circuit breakers that are not functional in the CS. We have here the parking brake. And last, on the right side of the seat, we have a switch to position, with, uh, which automatically uh, good in the center to rise or lower the seat position. It's very useful uh, when you go to land. We will see that uh, when we, we land the aircraft. And that's all for now. Hope you learned something in uh, this video. Next one, I will talk about the uh, INU and the few instruments, the most uh, important instruments that it composed, known as THSI, the PS, uh, the PCN, sorry, PCN, and the PSM also a few functions like this switch here i will talk about it a few so if you have any comments just feel free to post it if you like the video just you actually know what you have to do if you have any question just let me know and until next time have a good one and fly safe